The A220-500 has been discussed by leaders in the aviation industry for some years now. The potential for such an aircraft is great. But would such an aircraft actually compete with Airbus's A320neo family aircraft? In this video, I will go over just that question, so stay tuned. Before I dive into this video, make sure to consider subscribing to my channel. You can expect more quality aviation content uploaded weekly. Also, if you're interested in flight simulation content, make sure to go check out my new second channel, Avid Flight Simulation. The AT20-500 has been a possibility for some time now, with Bombardier originally testing design in simulators. After Airbus bought the C-Series and renamed it to the A220 line of aircraft, they also showed interest in the AT20-500 concept. And while they have never really committed to the design, most anticipate the AT20-500 to become a reality sometime down the line. But how does the AT20-500 compare to Airbus's already existing single aisle line of aircraft, the A320neo? Well, as far as capacity goes, the AT20-500 slots in between the A319neo and the A320neo, with the capacity to be likely in between 160 to 170 passengers, while the slightly larger A320neo typically carries between 160 to 180 passengers. The difference in capacity between them would be marginal. But how does it compare to the A319neo? Well, the smaller A320 family jet, the A319neo, typically carries between 120 to 150 passengers, which makes it closer to the smaller A220-300. So an A220-500 would be close to both aircraft and seems to be right in between them. But as the A319neo is not such a popular aircraft anyway, with many pointing the A220-300 as a main cause, how do the A220-500 and the A320neo compare? Well, we've already gone over both of their capacity, with the A320neo having a slightly larger one. But what about other factors? Another key factor would be range. The A320neo has 6,850 kilometers of range, while the A220-300 has 6,297 kilometers of range. As the A220-500 has not been built and not figure, figures have not been published, the range of such a concept is not precisely known. If the AT20-500 was to use the same engines and keep the same fuel capacity as the AT20-300, the range would be less. In the case of most stretches in commercial aviation, the larger the stretch, the less range such an aircraft would have. Take for example the 787 Dreamliner. The 787 stretch, the 787-10, has a lot less range than the original variant, the Dash 9. Now Airbus could potentially add some larger fuel tanks, like they have done with A321neo family, to make the LR and XLR variants to increase the range. While this does seem like a great idea without giving much thought about it, there is a consequence of adding larger fuel tanks to an aircraft. that is extra weight. And with extra weight, an aircraft burns more fuel to fly the same distance. So the efficiency of an aircraft would be less than if it had just the standard fuel tanks. But what, are, what matters is which aircraft is more efficient. Without extra fuel tanks, there is no doubt that the A220-500 would burn less fuel than an A320neo. But with extra fuel tanks, it depends. Since there are no sure numbers for any of this, however, this is all speculation. I would still believe that an A220-500 with larger fuel tanks would still be significantly more fuel efficient, but there is no way to tell for sure. So what does the A220-500 have to offer that the A320neo doesn't have? Well, it is a newer and much more modern aircraft. The A320neo is not a clean sheet design and is based on an older aircraft. The A220-500 would be a much more air modern aircraft and would have all the benefits associated with being a newer aircraft generally. The experience would be better, the aircraft would be more modern, the overall design would be superior. There is one thing that makes the A320neo much more attractive to many airlines, that is fleet commonality. 
For many airlines that have already A320 family aircraft in their fleet, training all of their pilots and staff to a new design would not be ideal. So to many airlines that already operate A320 family aircraft in their fleet, the A220-500 would not be a logical A320 replacement. The A320neo, while being based on an older design, still makes sense for many airlines to order over an A220-500. And besides that fact, there are still some more small benefits in the A320neo's favor. For example, the A320neo would most likely have a superior cargo capacity. So which aircraft is superior? Well, it depends on the airline, and it also depends on how Airbus would approach the whole AG20-500 concept. They can market it as a higher capacity regional aircraft or a regular single aisle like the A320neo. So I see no clear winner in this comparison as both would suit different airlines' different needs. What do you think? Do you believe that the AG20-500 would encroach on the A320neo's market share? Let me know down in the comments. Also, make sure to go check out my brand new aviation website at theavidaviator.net. You can get all of my content there as well as more frequent updates from me. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it consider giving it a like. That is it for this video, I will see you in the next.